Hello, and welcome or welcome back to my channel, Talented Reads. In today's video, I'm going to be talking about all of the books that I read in September. I read a total of 16 books and a total of 4,774 pages. My average rating was 3.7. I read three ebooks, two audiobooks, and 11 physical books. For star ratings, I had three 4.5 stars, four 4 stars, five 3.5 stars, three 3 star books, and one 2.5 stars. My first rating under a three. I read five new releases, one not so new release, seven backlist books, and three ARCs. And ARCs are advanced reader copies for books that are coming out later this year. All right, let's get into all of the books. So this year, if you've been to my wrap-up videos before, you know this by now, but I am doing a horror challenge this year in which I read a group of books every month associated with a specific sub-genre of horror. Um, I have a dedicated horror wrap-up video coming next week. So the books that I read for that, I'm just going to run through really quick here. Cycle of the Werewolf by Stephen King, set in the isolated town of Tarker's Mills in Maine. Over the course of a year, a werewolf makes itself right at home, striking fear in all of the residents. Coyote Rage by Owl Going Back. Once every seven years, representatives of all the tribes of the Great Council travel to the sacred gathering. Animals and men sit side by side. But Coyote was secretly devising a plan that would do away with the rule of man. Raven, secretly hearing of his plan, decides to try to stop Coyote. A Beastly Business by John Blackburn. We follow Bill, who is in need of some money and happens to come across someone looking to hire him for a job. What is the job? Cleaning out the basement, which happens to have a very dead, very hairy man named Henry Oliver. Feral by Matt Serafini. Jack and Alan decide to spend the summer out in western Massachusetts. Upon arriving there, they find out many people have gone missing and others have a big craving for meat. And lastly is The Werewolf by Alma Katsu. This is set in Germany, 1945. Ue is recruited by the village bully to join a resistance group preparing to fight the Allied soldiers. Then Ui witnesses the group's transformation. All right, so as you can tell, or probably guess, this month's subgenre was werewolves. So um, those were the five bits that I picked. Can't wait to talk about them next week in that wrap up video. So let's run through the arcs that I read. First is Malice House by Megan Shepard. Haven's father uh, recently passed away and she arrives at his remote seaside estate, Malice House, to kind of help clean and purge. And while she's there, she finds a story um, hidden away in the attic called Bedtime Stories for Monsters, which was never published by her father. 
Uh, the book is unlike anything he's ever written, and she starts to wonder if these monsters that he was seeing at the end of his life were real after all. So I really liked this. Um, the synopsis reads like a typical thriller, um, but it actually has a lot more supernatural elements in it, which I think is where it's going to turn some readers off. Um, yeah, I think it's going to be one of those kind of polarizing novels. But I thought the intermix um, of the story with the supernatural elements actually did the storyline some justice. And I also liked this kind of book within a book. Um, it was perfect for the story. Um, that bedtime stories for monsters, they, like, after or at the start of each chapter, they would pick, like, a little short story from that and put it in the beginning of the chapter, which kind of helped guide the story throughout the entire book. Um, so it was cool that we got, like, a taste of the book that her father wrote, because um, she would kind of explain, like, you know, how like, how creepy the book was, and so we kind of got to experience that along with Haven. Um, Haven herself is an artist and talks about, like, drawing the characters from her father's book. And to be honest with you, I now kind of wish we would get, like, a prequel or, like, another book of just the short stories from the book, for, or from the bedtime stories for monsters, along with the illustrations. I think that would be really cool. But all in all, I couldn't put this book down, and I really enjoy the creepy atmosphere and the characters. So thank you to Nat Galley and Hyperion for the art. Uh, this book was released October 4th, so go and get your copy. The Dark Between the Trees by Fiona Barnett. In 1643, a group of 17 soldiers fleeing from the enemy decide to enter Moresby Wood to hide. Um, but only two are only ever seen again. Now, a group of five scientists decide to enter the forest to uncover what happened to the soldiers. Um... I struggled with this rating a little bit. Like, I enjoyed the book. Um, you know, I thought the forest setting was really spot on. I really felt like I was there. And you get that isolation and unsettling feeling along with the characters. The book did a really good job at making you feel kind of disoriented. You know, the compass like, never worked, the direction and the items in the forest changed, and so it just, you know, it, it made, it was made to make you feel confused, which it certainly did. Um, the one thing that I struggled with was the alternating point of view. Um, we had the past, which was the view of the soldiers, and then we had the present, which is the group of the, the five scientists that entered the forest. And so, you know, it would um, go to the past and something would happen. And then it would cut to the present and the same thing would happen. Um, you know, it kind of just felt almost repetitive at that point. Um, I think I just preferred the past point of view because... You know, all of this creepy stuff was happening for the first time. And so, you know, when we got to the present, it just seems like been there, done that kind of thing. Um, yeah, I think I would have preferred one or the other point of view in the book. Um, but, you know, all in all, I think if you're, especially if you're like on a camping trip or going to be in the forest or want that really good spooky 
autumnal vibe, like, this is the perfect book for that. Uh, thank you to Nat Galley and Solaris for the art. This book will be released October 11th. Loot by Jennifer Thorne. The residents of Loot live a good life year after year. Good weather, good health, good fortune. But we all know that's too good to be true, right? And so every seven years during the summer, seven people die. No more, no less. Our point of view is from Nina, who is new to loot and arrives just before the day. Will she survive? Dun, dun, dun. <laughs> um, so this wasn't bad. Um, the curse of the day is pretty prominent throughout the entire book. Um, you know, there's a lot of, like, references to the day coming and the day is almost here. And, you know, you just had that kind of, like, looming dread about the whole thing. Um, and I think the island itself had this very cultish attitude about it. Not, like, scary, but just, you know, the references that it would make or talking about traditions that helped with the day, like all of that just brought this very cultish attitude to it. Um, and you know, it just kind of made it feel like, okay, something's off about this, you know, kind of the entire time. Um, Mina's character, I thought was a good addition to loot. Um, you know, I felt like she took the day in stride um, better than, I guess, I would expect an outsider to handle the whole thing. Um, I will say, when the day finally arrived, like, the countdown of the seven people, um, that was pretty intense. I almost wish we would have got more of the day itself instead of so much leading up to it. Um... Thank you to Nat Galley and Nightfire for the art. This book released October 4th. Alrighty, let's run through the rest of my reads. Gods of Jade and Shadow by Silvia Moreno Garcia. Uh, Casapia is pretty much a housemaid to her grandfather and gets treated like filth. Um, when she is in his room one day, she finds a wooden box and accidentally unleashes a Mayan god. Tassopia decides to help him return to his throne, and so she goes on an adventure. Um, I really enjoyed this. I loved the Mayan culture references, and, you know, as Tassopia travels through Mexico... And we meet kind of all the monsters and other gods and, you know, things that go bump in the night. Um, I loved meeting them. I thought the game that Casopia ends up kind of getting caught up in just had this little twinge of magic that was just beautiful and very well done and was great for the overall plot of the book. I think it really added a nice touch to it. It was just lovely. And then um, I actually read two books by Sylvia this month. The second being her new release, The Daughter of Dr. Moreau. This is a reimagining of the island of Dr. Moreau uh, set in Mexico. Carlota is the daughter of Dr. Moreau, who is either a genius or a madman, depending on who you ask. Um, at the estate live Dr. Moreau's hybrids, which are part animal and part human. Their world soon comes crashing down when the son of Dr. Moreau's patron arrives at the estate. 
uh, uh, this was another solid read for me. I really liked Carlotta's character. Um, she was tough, yet gentle. Um, and I thought she had really great character development throughout the novel. Um, I also loved the hybrids. Um, and it truly was a really good fight between man and monster. And, you know, if you've been with me through this channel, you do know I love a good monster. So, like, this just had all the stuff in it, you know? Um, it's actually been a while since I've kind of delved into the island of Dr. Moreau. So, I can't really discuss, like, how accurate it was, um with the reimagining because I don't really remember the original story. Um, but again, I really enjoyed this. So solid four star. Next is the Amber Dress Trilogy by Jeff Vandermeer. We are in the fictional city of Amber Dress. The city has its darkest corners, and there are stories and mayhem abound. We are following John Finch, who is a detective who has the fate of Amber Dress in his hands. Um, not gonna lie, I freaking struggled with this one. I just couldn't, I, I just couldn't get into it. Um, I didn't care for many of the characters. I, the storyline seemed a little too just uh, disjointed for my liking. Um, and I thought I would try to listen to the audiobook for a little bit and see if that helped. And I'm here to say that it did not help in the least. <laughs> um, in fact, I think it took me out of the story even more. Um, the language from the book um, and the style of the book, I think, was difficult to narrate. And while I think the narrator did a good job, um, it was just very distracting. Um, I played a section of it for my friend and she was like, wow, it sounds like he has allergies, <laughs> um, which is funny and a very accurate description. Um, but with all that said, I did like the last story. Um, it's kind of about this man in an insane asylum. And I thought that brought a very unique perspective to kind of the whole trilogy and really was a good way to like wrap it up um I almost wish we would have just had like a full novel of just that portion of the trilogy and just did away with like the first two books because the guy in the insane asylum just like he nailed it uh next is a touch of Jen by Beth Morgan this follows Remy and Alicia, who are a couple bound by their shared obsession with Jen, who is an influencer on social media and past co-worker of Remy. Uh, Remy and Alicia end up finding themselves in Jen's presence uh, and some things go down. Um, I have no words for this book. Um, like, I read some weird books this month, <laughs> and I don't know, like, like, I would consider this book weird, but I don't know, like, it wasn't that, it's just, it's really hard to explain, I think. I think what made it weird is the writing style. The writing style is very awkward. Like, maybe that was the point. I don't know. Like, like there's the writing would kind of be, you know, 
Alicia buys a top that she sees Jen wear and tries it on for Remy. Remy laughs, but secretly likes it. Alicia decides to leave the top on. You know, it's just... There's no, like, feeling. It's just, like, this happened, and this person said this, and it's, like, just very mad. I don't know. It's weird. Um, and then, you know, even with that said, the social interactions that the characters get themselves in are just even more awkward. Like, you feel really embarrassed for the characters. It's It was just a very interesting read. Um, I'm sure there's somebody out there that really loves this book. I don't even know who I would recommend it to, but if you're at all even intrigued, I guess check it out just to experience the awkwardness. Yeah, I'm just going to leave it at that. Killers of a Certain Age by Deanna Rayborn. Billy, Mary, Alice, Helen, and Natalie have worked for the museum as assassins and they are now up for retirement. The museum sends them on an all expenses paid vacation to mark their retirement, but they find themselves on the other end of the killing game. Um, this was just okay. The Museum School for Assassins was pretty interesting. Um, I liked the chapters of the past that are set at the school where they are kind of learning their skills. Um, I just, I didn't really care for any of the characters, which I don't think is necessary per se, but... You know, when the book is around a plot where their lives are at stake, it's hard to feel, like, sad or scared for them and what they're dealing with when you don't really like any of them. So, um, I think if you like cozy mysteries, this would probably up your alley. It's more, um, like a lighthearted read, even though they're all assassins. You don't get, you know, a lot of the assassin chapters so next is the deep by river solomon um so i'm gonna actually read the synopsis that comes with this because it covers it like way better than i could explain yetu holds the memories for her people water-dwelling descendants of pregnant African slave women thrown overboard by slave owners who live lives in the deep. Their past, too traumatic to be remembered regularly, is forgotten by everyone save one, the historian. This demanding role has been bestowed upon Yetu. Yetu remembers for everyone, but it's destroying her. And so she flees to the surface and discovers a world her people left behind long ago. Oh, this was a beautiful book. Um, you know, it's obviously heartbreaking. Um, as the water dwellers start to remember, you know, what happened to their ancestors and stuff that no one should have ever experienced. Um, you feel for Yetu and even when she discovers the surface people like it's a whole new world but you know still tragedy always occurs um and the author did a great job at turning tragedy into something beautiful as it manages to bring people together um and I listened to this on audio and would highly recommend the narrator did a fantastic job Mary by Nat Cassidy. Mary is a middle-aged woman trying to blend into the background, unremarkable and invisible. But lately, she's been having urges to do unspeakable things. <laughs> um, this was another uh interesting read. Mary's 
urges, I'll say, and visions are pretty trippy. Um, and I think it takes you a minute to really figure out, like, the pace of the story. And the beginning when you're reading, um, it feels like it jumps around a little bit. Um, which kind of, it, it takes a minute to get your footing and, like, even a time to try to figure out, like, what the hell is going on. Um, there is a kind of crossover to a serial killer, which is done in a way that I didn't expect, um, which is kind of cool. Uh, and I, even though I didn't give it the greatest rating, I almost want to reread it because I feel like this is a book that each time you read it, you're going to pick up on things that you didn't notice before just because there's just so much going on. Um, yeah, it's a very interesting and I think conversational read. Uh, yeah. And lastly is The Last Housewife by Ashley Winstead. While in college, Shay and a group of friends get seduced with lies by a man, and they become a kind of cult. Years later, only a couple of them manage to escape. Now, Shay hears of the passing of her friend and takes it upon herself to uncover what happened. Um... This one is a hard one to rate. There's a lot of really difficult topics and scenes in here, which I think would be triggering for some people. Um, and while I enjoyed the mystery part of it, I think it didn't quite go where I thought it would go. And I don't know that I liked how it ended. Um, and I think my other biggest problem is Shay kind of forces herself into some pretty hairy situations, but then does it again and again and doesn't really get anything new out of it, doesn't learn anything new. Um, so, you know, the situations and I don't know kind of how she navigates through those situations just make it feel um kind of repetitive um on that note I will say that this does have a podcast element to it and I really enjoyed that and I thought the um little splurges of little chapters here and there with the interview um style in the book was a good Addition, I thought it helped to shed some light on the past without doing, like, alternating point of views. Um, so I thought that was a nice touch. All right. So that's all I read for the month of September. Uh, drop a comment below and let me know how your reading went. What was your favorite book of the month? And what are you looking forward to coming into the spooky season? Thanks for stopping by and I'll see you in my next video.